Hey guys, uh, welcome back to today's video. Uh, today's video is going to be a video of how I made the first doll for the Calgary Zoo. So this little one is a black-footed ferret. Uh, and it's the first doll that I've created for their large order with me. This is the third order that I've done um, with them for their projects, for their um, educational programs. And um, yeah, so it's the first little doll. Uh, as you can see, big doll. So this was made as a life-size replica of a black-footed ferret. Uh, so I'll go through the whole process of how I made him. So if you want to know how that happened, keep watching. Alright, so if you haven't seen my sculpting video of sculpting the head for this ferret, then um, check out my channel and I go through the whole process of sculpting it and all the materials that I use. So if you're unsure, check that out. It's on my channel. I'll try and remember to link it down below. I never remember though. So once that's all nice and baked and it's ready to be painted, I apply a little bit of um, primer to the, pa the bits that I'm going to paint. It's just a canvas primer, but it works really well for resins and polymer clay. And then I can go ahead and color in all the bits that are, need that are going to be visible um, underneath the faux fur. So that that's usually around the mouth, the nose and the eye area, and sometimes the ear area as well, especially for um, making the bats like I'm making at the moment. They have little uh, flesh ears so you want to paint those areas as well and I'm using a brand of paint called Chromacryl it's just a water-based acrylic paint and I found it works really well for um, painting resins and uh, polymer clays never really had a problem with it uh, sometimes you can get a uh, paints that become a bit sticky it's just a reaction against the polymer clay or the resin so I always suggest that you um, give it a go uh, when you are applying any sort of paint or varnish or anything like that against any other resin or polymer clay so once that's all dry um also painted the feet but i seem to have lost the footage for that uh so the feet are actually resin that i um sculpted a long time ago for a different ferret doll and i thought that would work really well and they're a lot stronger than polymer clay feet as well so once that's all done i can move on to the body so i bought this faux fur specifically for this doll it was really really hard to find a faux fur that is the same color as this ferret it's got a uh, sort of a whitey or off-white um, undertone and it also has brown tips so that was a really quite hard to find the right type of faux fur for that the brown for the legs i already had so um i didn't need to order that one but um Yes, I have a distracted cat. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so once I've drawn all the patterns, that's a custom pattern for this particular doll because I didn't make any replicas of it. Uh, I can sew it all together in, on a sewing machine. The sewing machine I use is really, really old and I need to upgrade one day, but um, you can also hand sew these if you don't have a sewing machine. It just takes a bit longer. The reason why I use a sewing machine is I find it to be a lot stronger. When um, you're posing a doll, there's less chance of the seams breaking and also it's a lot quicker as well. You just have to get your patterning right. Um, so I have a patterning tutorial in my shop if you're interested in something like that. I also have a couple of free patterns over on my Patreon uh, for all of my patrons. Uh, for five, $5 and up patrons, I should say. So once that's all sewn up, I can then flip it the right way around. So you can get a little idea of what the body is going to look like. Um, it's I've sewed on the brown fabric it's very very similar to the white fabric so it's good pile length it's very very similar the brown is a little bit thicker than the white um, but it's not something that I can't work with thick fur sometimes is quite hard to work with just as like thin fur is hard to work with as well so you want to try and find a fur that's a good um, happy medium um, and then we can start building our armature so for this one I'm using a ball and socket armature this is the smaller size that I have uh, this whole process will be over on my patreon I'll go through the whole process of making the armature um, out of the ball and socket so it will be available possibly next month uh, for my five dollar and up tiers as well I also have uh, previously uh, added some videos of some of the previous dolls all the armatures are on there as well if you want to get a quick access to it so once the armature is complete and inserted I can start sewing everything up um, usually start by adhering the faux fur to the head and that way there's like a good base solid base that you can work from you can start adding stuffing in as you're sewing your doll up so I add stuffing to the neck um, 
once the legs have been sewn up. So I uh, use a ladder stitch to sew all of my pieces up. Um, usually you want to try and get a, a thread that is a similar color to the faux fur you're using because this is brown. I use a black faux fur to be sort of, can't really see it in the seams. Um, and then you want a good quality thread as well and that really really helps with um, the thread uh, not not knotting up in the faux fur or not snapping so I use the Guterman um, thread it's really really good quality you can also get upholstery thread which I use quite a lot I use it for my bats that I'm making or my flying foxes that I'm making um, it, it really holds it together really well and you can pull it really tight and it won't snap like thinner thread so once that's done I can glue it all uh, to I can glue the faux fur to the resin and I use a tacky fabric glue from a place here called spotlight you can find something similar similar in your local craft stores it's nothing special it's just a cheap cheapish bottle of um, fabric glue so once that's all sewn up and done I can start uh, applying some faux fur to all of the pieces that are exposed so polymer clay piece on the head and the resin piece on the feet once that's dry I can start giving it a trim all over trim make sure it looks like a ferret and um, start adding any little details like um, that eye mask that you see on this ferret um, and I do that just with a brush this time you can do it with an airbrush but I wanted uh, to do it with my actual brush I, fi I, find, I find it works really well when you're trying to do small bits of things airbrush um, works well obviously with that um, with doing finer things but I also find that doing a brush works really well as well so I try to experiment with both things and see what I like to uh, and see what li I like better I'm also adding a little bit more of those brown tips against the white faux fur. I just needed it to be a little bit more, a little bit darker after that trim. It sort of trimmed off a, a couple of bits of those um, brown tips. But um, yeah, then I add any extra little details like the whiskers. I have a tutorial in my shop for whiskers if you want to know how I make them and what I use. You can find it at creaturesandat.com. That is pretty much it for this video. It's a bit short. I think seem to have lost some footage for some reason. I don't know why, but um, yes, this one is for the Calgary Zoo, so it won't be for sale. But you can check out my shop, creaturesandat.com, for any little critters in there. And also you can join my Patreon if you like, and you'll get access to a whole heap of things from there. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.